Hey guys, welcome back to another live. I'm Jenna and welcome to my home studio. Today we're going to be talking about um, printing different items for employee swag. So what that is, is basically either just apparel or accessories that have the corporation or company's logo on those items so that they can either wear those to work in meetings with clients, um, carry them to and from different things that they have going on, whether that's going from work to the gym. So maybe it's a backpack of some sort. So there's really so many different accessories and items that you can really print for this market. And right now, because of everything that's going on, this, um, this particular business opportunity is continuing to expand because uh, companies and businesses are looking for a way to build uh, morale and um, build unity in their employees, even whenever they're not actually reporting to the office anymore. So um, I feel like if it's something that is uh, popular right now, then of course it's going to be a great business opportunity for those of you that are printing in-house and are constantly looking for different markets to reach. So this is a really great one um, because there it's just so easy with a heat press to be able to print all these different items and also offer really premium finishes. So we're going to review everything from basic matte finishes to reflectives that really build a lot of profit opportunity in a piece. And then of course those dimensional logos uh, that you can achieve through flex style or leather patches and things like that. So um, I see some of you guys commenting in, so I appreciate you guys as always uh, joining us and showing us love on all the different topics that we've been presenting you guys. Um, this is the most that we have gone live um, since I've worked for the company. So we go live every two, um, every week, two times a week. Now Josh and I do split um, for every other week, but I'm struggling a little bit to even come up with topics. So I'm glad that I actually uh, came across this article. Shout out to Vicki if you're watching for sending it over um, because it's just a really great business opportunity for those of you that are looking to just add on additional business if you're experiencing some downtime right now, or maybe you just want to add a whole nother market entirely. So I see everybody commenting in from Facebook. Make sure you give us a like while you're there and also from YouTube. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to dive right in and start printing. So I'm going to be working with the pink craft press that you guys have seen me work with a good bit. Um, one thing that I want to point out with this press is you're a little bit limited to what you can do. Um, so if you have a heat press that has interchangeable platens or three, be sure to utilize them for each of the things that I'm going to print today because they just make the overall process that much simpler. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my heat press screen here so that you guys can actually see what I am doing at the heat press. All right, so the first application I'm going to do um, is just a basic polo. And polos obviously are a great opportunity for businesses, um, especially if they're doing a lot of client meetings, even if they're doing Zoom meetings. So if they're not actually face-to-face, -face, but they're still meeting um, through Zoom or Teams, it's nice to still be able to represent the company that you're working for. And I feel like this polo is perfect for this market because it is a nice style. We're still keeping that very professional look but it also is a very comfortable style so that you can wear it throughout the day and not get irritated about having to wear a polo while you're working from home. Because a lot of people, when they're working from home, they like to be comfortable. Same goes for me. While I've been working from home, I like just wearing a t-shirt. So this is a nice quality uh, polo. It's sourced from Sanmar. It's the new era brand, um, and it is a cotton polyester blend. So since we're working with a cotton poly blend, I'm going to use Ultra Weed. And there are a variety of print locations that you can utilize, but one thing we constantly talk about whenever we're printing very common items is something that you can do that's different and will allow you to build unique value in the products that you're offering. 
So while polos are very popular for printing left chest logos, there are some other unique locations that you can utilize to really just build quality in your brand and differentiate yourself from competition. So I'm inserting this heat printing pillow and we are gonna go ahead and just do the standard left chest logo for the first application because while it is something that's commonly done, um, it's important that you're still offering that location as well because when people see a lot of something, they tend to want that, that exact look. So the first application again, left chest logo, we are using ultra weed and metallic silver. I went with metallic silver just so it um, kind of was something a little bit different from your standard matte finishes. Um, and I feel like it pairs nicely with the um, metallic like buttons that are on here. Now to protect those buttons from melting, I am gonna use a cover sheet for this application and ultra weight applies whenever you're working with polyesters or cotton poly blends as low as 260 degrees. And that will get a full 12 second tack. And that's a hot peel. So once that's complete, that application is done. And now for a really cool, unique placement, what we're gonna do is actually flip this to the back and do the opposite shoulder. So we did the left chest logo. Now we're gonna do the back of the shirt. And I'm actually gonna thread this so that these buttons are not in the way and that I'm working closer to me as opposed to the back of the press. So this is the left chest side. I wanna go opposite of that. So I'm gonna find my seam and drop down just a few inches and hit that back shoulder placement. Now there are some polos made out there that have a really cool seam that goes from the collar over to the sleeve, which is a really unique way um, to just offer a different style of polo, but it also helps with this placement too. And now because I have this completely threaded and everything's out of the way of pausing and uneven pressure, I'm not gonna worry about that pillow. I am gonna increase my pressure and apply this for its full application. So don't be afraid to go beyond the norm. We see a lot of standard placements um, a lot of the time, and maybe that's because it's by request. Maybe that's exactly what your customer wants, but incorporating a unique placement to just build more value in your brand and your offering, then maybe create a sample and show them, um, you know, how cool it looks to, have to just switch it up and do something a little different from the standard applications. So I'm gonna hold this up to this side of the screen so that you guys can see the finished look. Again, this is a new era polo, a 4060 blend using cotton and polyester. So we have that as the left chest and then we have the right shoulder printed as well. All right, so a really unique way to just add more branding opportunity for your customer. And if you're able to do that with them, then that's more profit opportunity you can build in one piece. So maybe you are selling this for $22. We can increase that op profit opportunity by adding that additional placement and sell it for 26 or 28. Now, New Era is a really well-known brand, so you can even use that to your advantage when it comes to um, using that as a selling point and increase the value even more. The next application we're gonna do is one that I'm really excited about because we're gonna do a couple of unique applications. So one thing um, whenever you're working with company logos is you wanna make sure that um, you can definitely switch it up a little bit to add um, some competitive value, I guess, I don't really know how to word it. So you just want to make sure that you're like standing out against someone else that could print the same exact thing for them. Um, so be sure whenever you're working with their logo that you can switch up color schemes based off of the apparel that you're applying it to. So we're going to be applying this really nice jacket from uh, Sanmar. It's an Ogeo brand and it's 100% polyester. It is so soft. I absolutely love this fabric. Um, and 
because it is a really unique kind of like olive green and it has a nice like shine to it, I wanted to make sure I was building off of the value that the jacket is already presenting. So by just dropping a basic logo on there, while that is still valuable to the customer, what can you do differently so that it's not so cookie cutter or something that they see all the time? So I'm switching up on um, the standard colors of stalls, for example, that are typically a red, um, white, and blue. And I'm going to um, pair it with this jacket by doing a muted green. So whenever I was considering how I was going to do this logo, I was thinking um, maybe the really bright like neon green would be cool or a neon yellow, but this definitely for more of a tonal, more premium look is going to be paired great with this greenery color. So that's why I went more with the muted greenery as opposed to the really bright lime green one. So we're actually going to do three placements on this jacket so that you can see all the opportunity you have in just one piece. And jackets and hoodies really do that well because there's just so many different areas that you can print on the piece without making it look as though it's too much or you're devaluing the product at that point. So for this application, we're going to do, let's start with the fun ones first and then we'll complete it with the left chest logo. You guys have already seen a left chest logo be heat applied, so I'm gonna do something a little different here. So we're going to print the back of the collar because this is something that kind of like stands up when it's being worn. So we're gonna have a whole print location here that we can utilize. And what I'm gonna do with this is just drop this thick seam off to the side. and place my logo. Now I am finding center based off of where these two seams are. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna load it up real quick so that you guys can see these seams. So there's two seams here that are coming from the shoulder back in to the seam by the collar. So I'm just going center of those and that's how I'm figuring that will be at a nice placement there for this location. Now I do have a thick seam up here because it is an overlapping seam so that I make sure that I'm getting a nice even pressure. I actually am going to place my pillow down and heat apply it like that. I try to avoid using accessories if it's not like too necessary because it just adds more time spent at the press. And if you're doing a lot of these, you want it to just be production efficient and quick. So try to find an easy way to just put something on the press without having to add a ton of production time per item because we're already doing two other print locations on this jacket. So that's already adding time as is. And this is a hot peel. So you can go ahead and peel that back. And you'll notice that there is no scorching. So keep that in mind whenever you're working with heat sensitive fabrics like this that would typically scorch or bruise the product. Once you are working with a product such as UltraWeed that applies it is like a low temperature of 260 degrees, you avoid that from happening. So these types of uh, applications are more achievable if you're working with the right product. All right, so that's one print location. The other print location we're gonna do is the cuff of the sleeve because this is actually one of those sleeve types where your thumb comes through. So I want to add a custom print down there that's close to the hand. That might be a little bit too big, so I might go vertical with it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so if I'm by this, if this, if this is the thumb, I'm gonna go right here next to it and personalize right there. All right, and we still have that pillow there, so these seams are not gonna cause any uneven pressure. Always cover with a cover sheet. Sometimes I forget that entirely. I feel like you guys have caught me a lot asking me why I don't use a cover sheet. 
It's just because I forget. We do recommend that you use one. Right. And another successful customization placement on such a unique jacket. So whenever um, you're sourcing your apparel, it's important to consider what all print locations that you can get out of it. And that's kind of what I like to do when it comes with different apparel that you can print is being able to source those and show you guys how you can print them differently. So this is how the back collar turned out. I'm gonna zip this up so that you guys can get a better visual. All right, so that collar stays up like that. So that's a really nice profit opportunity there. And then also where the thumb goes in. I actually like it better vertically next to that as opposed to um, horizontally down by the seam. So that actually turned out really cool. But you see why I like to do colors that pair with the color of the apparel. So uh, this muted green, I think, just pairs really nice with this olive green, as opposed to just doing basic white and black applications. While it would still look cool and still really stand out, just being able to do something unique can go a long way. I will print. I'm keeping this jacket. That's why I press stalls on it. It's my size. <laughs> So I'm going to print the left chest logo later, and I'm going to wear that to trade shows. All right, so I see you guys uh, commenting in. Hello, we have people from Bronx. We have Texas. We have Minneapolis. Thank you, Marianne. I'm glad you like the logo. <laughs> All right, so just seems like some comments are coming in. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Okay, so Clay asks, remind me why the pillow is underneath everything on the press. So, so far we have printed two products that have obstructions or hardware like buttons and zippers and thick seams that can get in the way of getting a nice flat, even pressure. Whenever you guys are working with our heat transfers, you'll notice that all of our application instructions come with a specific time, a specific temperature, and a specific pressure. So pressure is key to getting an accurate application for all heat transfers. So if I'm not using this pillow to make up for those seams that are getting in the way of an even pressure, then the product is, might not apply accurately. It might look like it's applied and then it could even come, up, come off in the wash later. So we wanna make sure we're getting an even pressure. This pillow is going to allow any thick seams or buttons or zippers to sink down into it and keep the print area raised and nice and flat for us, All right? So it also helps, and I like using pillows with um, some heat sensitive fabrics like 100% polyester because those types of products can get bruised very easily, which means that the edges of the platen are coming through and creating a, um, like a marking or a, like a score mark. And those are really hard to get rid of unless you go and heat press the whole thing and try to get those out. So bruising and scorching are different. Scorching is whenever a product looks shiny, which is the cause of having too high of a heat whenever you're heat applying a product. Bruising is just the edges of a platen actually coming through because it's a high pressure and creating a box, all right? So pillows also help with 100% polyester to keep them from bruising. So this goes a long way, this accessory, and that's why I like using a lot of uh, pillows, and they come in a variety of different sizes too. So if I wanted to print the entire sleeve of that jacket, I would have inserted the leg and sleeve pillow and been able to print that without any seam getting in the way. So really good question, Clay. I think it was Clay who asked. Yes, Clay. <laughs> All right, and then um, Michelle asked, I wanna do body suits. What is the best way to press with them? Um, so baby body suits, like onesies, I use a pillow with those every time. Or if I'm using the auto clam or the fusion, I drop in a six by 10 platen because it's the perfect dimensions of heat applying those onesies. So 
Um, if you have the ability to do interchangeable platens with the Hotronics machine, I definitely recommend the 8x10 platen, but the pillows do a really well job too. All right, so beyond apparel, more employee swag that you can print for some more business opportunity is uh, accessories. So the first accessory I'm gonna do because it's really, really easy is a leather pad folio. All right, so if you guys haven't seen us heat print the leather pad folio yet, it is achievable, it can be done, or if you don't want to risk melting a 100% um, leather pad folio, then you can opt out and do our dimensional sticker flex style product, right? So with leather, I wouldn't recommend heat applying our flex style because if at that point you would have to do top heat only because it is such a thick product that bottom heat would not make it through to the top for our dimensional products to apply to easily. So if you are going to do dimension on a leather pad folio, then I recommend using the sticker product. So we do offer flex style in two different adhesive types. There is a um, pressure sensitive, which is the sticker, and then there is also permanent adhesive. So if you are doing leather accessories, I recommend opting out for the pressure sensitive adhesive as opposed to the um, permanent adhesive that you need a heat press for. So for the application for this, very simple, all we're gonna do is just place it. I'm doing this upside down, so if my placement is off, don't judge me too hard. All right, so we're just gonna place that down and I'm just using a little bit of pressure and then we can go ahead and peel off the carrier that it came on. Now, the longer that this is on there, the more durable it becomes. And this is a really easy way to add nice profit opportunity to such a standard promo type of product. All right, so dimensional logos known as flex style allow you to achieve that premium look even on accessories. And this goes beyond just leather pad folios. You can do this on mugs if you want to. All right, so this mug is just like a tin mug, but it's coated a little bit so that it's nice and smooth for this adhesive to adhere on to. So what I would recommend for the sticker applications for FlexStyle is letting it set to the product you're applying it to before you hand it over to your customer. The longer this adhesive has to really cure to the substrate you put it onto, the longer it's going to last. So this, after a while, I'm not gonna be able to pick up at the corner. All right, so really great product will allow you to just add a more premium finish. And this goes beyond just accessories too. So while the stickers are great for hard goods and promotional products that you can't necessarily heat apply onto, you can also use these think for things you can heat apply onto. It would have been great for me to apply that onto the polo or the jacket so that I can add a really premium look. And this is very competitive to embroidery. So if you're not embroidering in-house, then you can offer something like this as a, um, a different option, or if you are embroidering, but it's not something that you can necessarily hoop onto your embroidery machine, then this is a great complimentary item to also offer as well. So flex style, really great product, easy way to just get a premium feel and effect on something. Now we're gonna go back to the heat press for our other applications. The next product we're going to heat apply is a laptop bag. So this laptop bag was sourced from Sanmar. It is an Ogeo brand. And the first thing you notice when you look at this are the buckles and how you can load that onto your heat press so that you can easily heat apply and brand this for your customer. So what we're going to do is utilize the heat printing pillow. I'm also going to be threading this on too, and we're going to be using CAD Cut High Viz Reflective. So this is a color reflective. 
So even though it looks like a charcoal right now, once I hit that with the flash, it's gonna shine bright silver. So this is a really another premium product that you can use for those large brands that wanna do employee swag with you. All right, so let's head back over to the heat press. My pillow is loaded on there. However, I am going to rotate it this way. And I'm going to have to dial back my pressure significantly for this application because although I'm isolating my print area with that pillow, those buckles are still going to be there a little bit off to the sides. All right, so I'm just dropping this right on there like so. I do need to start increasing my temperature a little bit though. All right, now to protect these buckles because they are plastic and although they're pretty thick and can probably withstand the heat, we still need to make sure that they are covered just in case it does melt up on the edges where they're a little bit beveled and a little bit higher. So the heat will definitely um, affect that if we don't cover them. So I'm just going to use my craft paper cover sheet to cover that. And because this is only going to be on there, I dialed my pressure back too far. Bear with me. Here we go. Might need a little bit more than that. Okay. So because we're not keeping it on there for a long dwell time, we can not really worry too much about those buckles. Now, if I was doing a product that maybe applied for 25 seconds, then I'd be a little bit concerned and would probably use a flexible application pad instead. But you can see here that the buckles are fine, not melted or anything. This is a cold pill product, so I am gonna wait for this to cool before I pull that carrier back. So keep that in mind if you are working with high-vis color reflective, you're gonna want that to cool before you pull that back. While we're waiting for that to cool, it is gonna take some time because that is a thick polyester and it's gonna hold that heat a good bit. We can go ahead and move on to our next application. So this is a cooler lunch box and the brand is F and & Co. And I'm pretty sure this was sourced from Leaves. But what we need to be cautious of whenever we're working with a product like this is not using anything that's too high of heat because this is a cooler, which means it has a foam in it that is keeping things cold. And then also this liner as well. So we want to make sure we're not melting the inside of the product as well as the outside. So you need to, whenever it comes to products like these, you need to take both things into consideration. So what I want to do, and this is just a wool finish, and then it has like a faux leather like band around the bottom. So really nice premium look. So we wanna make sure we're using a nice premium product to pair with it. There are two products that I would choose for this particular accessory. I would either go with the dimensional suede-like heat transfer vinyl known as Flock 2, or I would do the leather patch, okay? So I want you guys to comment in and say which one you want me to use. Do you guys wanna see the leather patch be heat applied or do you guys wanna see Flock 2 be heat applied? I'll wait for your responses and see what you say. While we're waiting, let's visit the comment section. I'm gonna start heating up my heat press in case you guys do choose the leather pad or the leather patch, because this is going to apply at a pretty high heat because it's a top heat only heat press. And I need to make sure that I'm at the right temperature. What's nice about this small press though is that it does not take as long to heat up as some of the larger heat presses like the 16 by 20 or the 15 by 15. All right, so 
Oh my gosh, I think it's a toss up. We have flock two, one, two, three, four, five. Six people want to see flock. And one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Nine people want to see the leather patch. I think someone else just commented in, so I think that's 10. So we're going to go with the leather patch, guys. And before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and peel back the color reflective so that you guys can see that as well. I'm curious how this one's going to come out because I feel like I didn't get a good pressure. I didn't. I might have to heat apply this one again. We're going to heat apply this one again. I didn't get enough pressure, and you can tell because... The letters are sticking, but the logo is not. Do you see where that's lifting up? So we'll heat apply this one one more time. I still was at a pretty low heat too, so that in combination with the pressure probably is the issue. And that's, my friends, is why we like to use interchangeable platens. Okay, so for the lunch bag, we are doing the leather patch. I'm going to utilize the pillow and I'm going to load this on from the side because it is smaller in width and it's easier for me to get this completely isolated. All right, let's see what heat we're at. We're at 315, so we've jumped up about 30 degrees so far. I'm going to make sure I got a good pressure there. There we go. That feels better. Okay. All right. So still we're going to use the pillow because of the zipper here. And then we're just going to place this right here. I'm going to make sure I cover with the cover sheet. This leather patch actually looks really good with this faux leather band that's down here. I just think it's a more consistent look overall. All right, now we're gonna heat apply. Top heat only with leather patches. I did a really like good guess of, I'm guessing 350 for 25 seconds, but I'm going to bring up the product on the site and actually make sure. So if we are using top heat only, let me show this to you guys. There we go. We'll use top heat only, then it's 360 for 20 seconds. So technically I'm 10 degrees off. So what we're gonna do is apply this for an additional uh, dwell time to make sure that it's definitely adhering on there because I do not want this to fail <laughs> because I feel like I never show leather patches and I don't want my first experience live to be absolutely terrible. However, you can apply this product two different ways. You can do it with lower heat, such as if you're doing it with the cat press and you're applying it to a hat, then you will be able to use the lower heat with the 360 IQ hat press, which is exactly what you're seeing here. So those are the application instructions with that. Then we also have the upper heated platen. So if we're just doing top heat only and you don't have a heated lower platen, then this is the recommended application instruction. If you have a lower heat, then you can use that one too. But even for this type of product, I would be a little concerned about it, the lower heat not actually making it through that cooler. So I would say for this type of project, I would recommend definitely top heat because there's just a, a lot of like thickness in this cooler, right? So there's just a, a big like padded foam in there you have all of that in there to work with. But the product applied, I did it a little bit differently, but you guys see the recommended applications. So it does look really good, very premium overall. 
I would say I could sell this way more for what I would with just the flock application. However, if you're not interested in selling like patches that are leather or the dimensional logos, if you want something that's still a little bit competitive for a premium look, flock two still offers that. So if you just want to do heat transfer vinyl, still really good product. And for those of you that wanted to see the flock, I'll apply it to just because I feel like being nice today. All right, so let's apply it on the back side. I have no idea how I'm gonna do this, so just bear with me. We're definitely gonna get the pillow in there. And then you guys will be able to see the flock finish too. All right, let's see. So Pamela asks, um, where do you get heat press leather patches from? So that's actually something that we recently started selling. Um, all you do is upload your artwork in the artwork uploader and select leather patches. And then we laser etch the product for you with a permanent adhesive on the back so that all you have to do is heat apply it. Um, in the past, they've con commonly be, have been um, used as embroidered leather patches. But now with this adhesive, you can, or this adhesive, you can just heat apply and you don't have to worry about stitching or anything. Flock 2 is another cold pill product. So we will wait for that to cool before we pill that. Candy's laughing at me. LOL. All right. So it seems like for the most part, everybody wanted to see the leather patch, which is cool. It is a really unique product. I'm glad we started offering them because it's such a big trend now, um, not only in heat printing accessories, but also in headwear too. And it goes beyond just your standard like six panel caps or your canvas or your twill caps. It's also popular on beanies too. Um, I haven't Actually, Josh Ellsworth did a really good video on heat applying these leather patches to beanies. So you should check that out because usually beanies is a really hard product to heat apply. Um, but he had success with it with that lower heat. All right, and this is the way the flock two turned out. So like I mentioned earlier, it is a velvety suede like finish. So it still offers a very premium effect definitely more premium than a standard flat heat transfer vinyl would such as the ultra weed that we did so we were able to build value in this because we used a metallic finish as opposed to just a basic matte finish um but yeah this definitely has more uh premium look and feel to it all right and we did that all without melting the inside of the bag so this is still a great uh use for employee swag All right so leather patch flock two let's reapply the reflective the color reflective so that you guys can see that finish and we don't have a total fail on our hands what I'm going to do to kind of increase the pressure a little bit you just make sure it's getting a good application is threaded on instead of just putting the flap on there and insert this pillow. So let's decrease this once more. Going to rotate this so that those buckles aren't up on there. All right, so high vis color reflect usually um, is typically a high temperature application. So I believe it applies anywhere from 320 to 330 and it gets 20 to 25 seconds. So fail one was not being at the right temperature. Fail two was not getting the right pressure. So that's why we did not get the right application. Now, if this is something that ever happens to you, don't be afraid and think like, oh, okay, well, this is garbage now because you can 
leave that right back on there and hit it again. Don't be afraid to do that so that you can save yourself the loss. Once again, cold peel, so we will wait for that to cool. All right. Candy says both options look great. I agree. It just depends on what your customer is looking for and what you guys want to sell it for. Marianne says, I love, love, love Flock too. It is a really great product. I like working with it. Um, it's a thicker product, so it's not the easiest to weed, but a lot of heat transfer vinyls aren't that easy to weed, so it's worth it in my opinion. Ron, price range. Um, which product are you asking about for the price range? All right. Yay. We got it to work. And now we can just clip these in. And now our product is ready to sell. All right, this is Ogio brand, so really great quality brand when it comes to sourcing accessories for businesses and corporations that want employee swag. All right, Roy asked, do you cut reflective material? I am a retired fire firefighter. Yes, so we so you can cut reflective material or we can cut it for you and send it to you ready to heat apply. So um, we offer two styles of reflective. We have the high vis color reflect that shows as a color. And then when it's hit with bright light, it has that 300 candlelight um, power, I believe is what it's called. Um, if I'm wording that wrong, you guys can call me out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it has that 300 um, level of reflectivity. And then we have 3M reflective, which is a very similar product, but it's only silver. It doesn't come in colors, um, but it's ANSI certified. So if you need a certified um, reflective that meets all of those specifications for like municipalities, like police, firefighting, um, then you can do that with the 3M reflective. Some people like the color reflective because um, silver doesn't show on everything, uh, on all colors, I guess I should say. So this, um, this color reflected by adding that color, it allows it to be seen better on like a Heather gray t-shirt, for example, or polo, something like that. So really great product. I think I like using it for adding, um, value to just standard prints but it does work well with municipalities and firefighters, police, all of that. Okay. Um, Karen asks, what product would you use for car windows? I would recommend using our um, sign vinyl. And I will show you that. I believe it's 651 is the permanent adhesive for sign vinyl. And that is what I would recommend for cars because you don't want something that's going to come off. Now, if you have it on the car window and you want to remove it, you can still remove it. It's not going to damage or ruin anything. You'll probably have to try a little bit harder to get the adhesive off of the window. But, um, and that's what's being represented down here, not on the shirt, on that bottle there. And then you can see it used on a sign. So there's a different, a lot of different ways that this is the permanent, like pressure sensitive sign vinyl so that it really lasts on there a long time. And then we also offer on um, that same product in patterns too. So if you want to do patterned sign vinyl, you can do that too. I know that's pretty popular for the car, like window decals and stuff. Happy to help Roy, thanks for joining us. Okay, it looks like I've answered all of the questions. Um, one more thing before we head out, I just want to point out another um, branding opportunity, of course, for 
um, employee swag is face masks. And I'm not going to print that because we've been printing face masks like crazy, but I wanted to show you. Oh, here they are. I wanted to show you some finished face masks that I did in a video for LAT Apparel. Um, so they are making a two-ply face mask that is 100% cotton. They do a ribbed um, seam structure around the two ply and they do it in adult and in children. Um, so obviously children, you don't have to really worry about for employee swag, but they do three different colorways. So this is the black and white. This is the all white. And this was done with a screen print transfer called Goof Proof from Transfer Express, and then a solid black. So three different colorways they offer this in. Um, easiest way to access these is through SNS Activewear, um, unless you wanna buy direct from LAT. It's not on their specific website. It is actually through um, their customer service. So all that information is on their website, though, if you are interested in these masks. But I just recommend going to SNS Activewear. Um, and then Transfer Express. So if you're working with our screen print transfers and you're currently getting apparel through Transfer Express, they are also offering a face mask that Josh just finished up a video on showing you guys how to heat print, I think just last week. Um, so if you guys wanna check that out, that's new on the Stalls TV YouTube channel. But that face mask is not only two ply, but you can also insert a foam. Um, it's not a thick foam so that it becomes like claustrophobic, but it's enough so that you're protecting anything from coming in. So if your customers are very weary about that, then that is a really great type of face mask to offer. All right. So that is my spiel for today. And I appreciate you guys so much for joining us. If I did not get to your question, I will be sure to answer that right after this broadcast is complete. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining us. Be sure to join us in our Facebook group, Heat Press for Profit. And if you aren't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you guys can see anytime we are posting new content. Thanks again. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and weekend. I will see you next time.